Have you realized you've been picking up less banger titles in your monthly hauls this year? I know I have. In today's physical media news topic video, we discuss why 2024 has not been the best year for physical media collectors. We get into a massive rant on why 2023 was way better for title releases. And then ultimately, we discuss will 2024 pick up the rest of the year? Go ahead and mega smash that like and subscribe. That way you stay entertained and up to date on all the latest physical media topics. And leave in the comments below, what do you think the better year was for physical media collecting? 2024 so far or 2023 and let's get into it now diving into 2024 to talk about why it's been such a lackluster year and why i'm not picking up as many titles unfortunately it's just because there's not any great new releases to really write home about yeah there's a few shining spots in there we can talk about like the james cameron 4ks that came out a lot of collectors wanted to see those, the ultra high definition, and we finally got them, which was excellent because I really appreciated True Lies, The Abyss, and Aliens on 4K, but there's no denying that they were very controversial. Not everybody liked the style they went with with 4K, and they did not like the squeaky, shiny new penniness to it all, and it just didn't look how it was originally filmed. So even though I liked them, a lot of people did not. So was that a true win for the year? I don't think so. Also, what else did Disney do out there? We did get some still books for their series on Disney Plus, Star Wars, MCU. Finally, right? Finally, they came to physical media if you wanted to own those in your collection. But isn't that just kind of two years too late on most of them? I would have rather have them way back when, but now I've already streamed them all. So do I really care about them as much now? No, not so much. Any other great releases come out this year? Yeah, we had like Killer Clowns from Outer Space from Screen Factory, which was a fantastic looking still book. Don't get me wrong there. I did really like that one. But what else have we seen from Screen Factory? Not a whole lot. And then also we talk about other studios out there like Lionsgate. Lionsgate has been really lackluster this year. They haven't had really cool stillbook designs. And then the stillbooks they do have seem to be a lot of repeats of movies we've already seen on 4K, like some Rambo titles. And then also the newer ones that were a little bit fresh that I was interested in, like Cutthroat Island, was super overpriced, $35 plus. And now we got stillbooks going $40, $45 out there. It is madness in 2020. 24. So Lionsgate has been slacking. Yeah, they dived really hardcore into the Vestron Video Blu-ray line, which I do appreciate, but were all those banger titles? Not really. I mean, the gate was fine enough, but was there really any title in there that I'm like, oh, this is awesome? Not necessarily. So a lot of repeats for movies out there. I mean, how many more of the same box sets are we going to keep seeing? Like the Saw box set. Why did we need another Saw box set? No, we did not need it. They're just causing forced double dips out there. And we see that with announcements of new complete box sets coming out. Like the Rocky franchise. Well, people already picked up a half box set before, and now we're going to force a double dip if you want the other Rocky movies in there. These are the types of announcements we have been getting this year, and it's just so unfortunate. And then the handling of physical media in general is taken over by Walmart for your in-store shopping experience. We know what they've done. It's been terrible. They are not consistent at all. They don't always stock properly on Blu-ray Tuesdays. And they haven't had really great editions either. They've done some gimmicks like glow-in-the-dark, terrible stillbook designs. Who wants those? But no really great original stillbooks for the most part. And once again, the still books they do have, super expensive now, 35, 40, 45 plus. They're just slacking there. Is there any other studio really doing a whole lot there? I don't think so. I think most of the studios have kind of had a down year, just not as much bangering titles that I would hope to see. Now we talk about boutique labels. Are the boutique labels doing great out there? I think a lot of them are having a down year as well. Vinegar Syndrome, has there been that one popular title every collector needed to pick up? I don't think so. They didn't have like a roadhouse this year. So I wasn't diving into Vinegar Syndrome more because of 2024. What about the other labels out there? We talked about Scream Factory. They had Killer Clowns, but that was pretty much the only hot title. 
we talk about Paramount. Paramount Presents line being pointless now because they just are doing standard studio re-releases of them, right? We saw the Red Eye announcement going to a standard 4K slipcover now. Then what the heck was the point of the Paramount Presents line? Now we talk about Arrow. Now Arrow has had some good releases in there. I'll give them that. It was like the Conan set. I absolutely loved. But has it been the best year for Arrow? Eh, probably not, in my opinion. I would like to see even more from them. And so these boutique labels are just not really shining through with amazing titles that everybody needs to pick up. Even Criterion, I haven't really seen those titles that are more mainstream and popular that just every collector really, really wants. Yeah, they've announced Risky Business to come out. But that's pretty much about it. They haven't really had that Thelma and Louise of this year so even the boutique labels i think are having a down year now they're doing a good job with what they have but once again these titles are just not as popular which is why i'm not picking up as many titles anymore unfortunately i used to have tons of giant monthly haul videos where i had a plentiful of titles from all these different labels and studios but it's just downgraded a little bit this year because there hasn't been that many new popular releases as in years past and that's just unfortunate like i said there's a few bright spots in there we got a columbia classics volume four set which is cool happy to see a fourth volume of that one but was that the best volume out of all the columbia classic sets no, one and two were still way better, in my opinion. I'd probably have it tied with number three. So even when we do get box sets, they're not like the best box sets of all time. We really haven't gotten many other box sets out there. So because studios, boutique labels aren't at their best this year, and of course, Walmart definitely not. Maybe it is their best, but it's not up the Best Buy standards. It's just been a down year for physical media collecting, in my opinion, of course. But let's talk about 2023 next. What did I really like from that previous year that we're missing in this year? So diving into 2023 now to reminisce about what I'm saying here about comparing that I think this 2024 is a weaker year. We just had better titles coming out in 2023. We talk about those amazing 4K still books that came out for like Cliffhanger, Air Force One, Flash Dance, and just awesome standard 4Ks for like Prince of Egypt and Avatar movies. There were some really good quality 4Ks out there. So I think the studios were doing a better job overall. You also had Lionsgate with amazing still books. You had fantastic still books from Lionsgate out there with like Crank was awesome, Sisu, John Wick, amazing still books from Lionsgate and they were reasonably priced. They weren't like 40, 45, you know, they weren't that outrageous price there. They were actually really good deals and great quality and awesome movie. So Lionsgate did a way better job in 2023, in my opinion, as well. And then just other studios in general, like Warner Brothers, they had a great year with their 100-year anniversary, releasing a lot of classic titles, the 4K. They had that 4K box set overseas people could get. They also did the Blu-ray box sets. They were doing something to celebrate their 100 years, and I do really appreciate that because a lot of the movies I did see from them were actually really, really good quality. So I think the studios were doing a banging job last year. And then also boutique labels had their really hot titles that people absolutely needed to pick up. Once again, I mentioned Criterion with Thelma and Louise, and they just did a great job on that release. And also had other releases people were interested in, of course. And then you just had amazing box sets as well out there. You think back to the box sets, the Tox box. You had, of course, the Superman collection out there, the Empire of Screams box set, the Psycho collection box set, so many great box sets. Like I said, boutique labels were doing a banging job with a lot of their titles. We had Hugo uh, from Arrow on 4K, which was just gorgeous. Probably one of the best 4Ks I've ever seen in my life. So these titles that people needed to pick up, even Screen Factory had some cool limited edition still books, like that Pumpkinhead still book was fantastic. It was really cool design. And we just don't see that a lot of the times anymore. Yeah, they did great with Killer Clowns, but what else have they released this year that was really amazing? So I think the boutique labels 
last year were doing better. I think the studios were doing better. And not only that, you were able to shop for everything at Best Buy, which was a way better experience. Once again, we would see sales and discounts. You would have it more consistently stocked on Blu-ray Tuesdays. So Blu-ray Tuesdays actually meant something. And it was just a better atmosphere in Best Buy overall. You go into Walmart now, it's like the wild, wild west out there. So when you talk about titles from studios, boutique labels, all the box sets in there, all the hot releases, the Best Buy hunting experience. I think 2023 was more enjoyable for physical media collectors as in comparison with 2024 so far. Once again, things can change, which we will talk about next to say, hey, is 2024 going to pick up here with some amazingness? But as it stands right now, I think 2023 is the clear winner over 2024. But once again, let's talk about where does physical media go next in 2024. So let's talk about the rest of 2024 here. And should we be super excited for what's upcoming as physical media collectors? And I'm personally not overly excited. What do we have announced to get super excited about? We do have Friends 4K coming out. Yay, overpriced TV series, over $200. I'm not excited for that. We have the Rocky collection coming out, and I'm a massive Rocky fan, my most watched franchise of all time, but a lot of people already picked up the half box set, the one through four, and now there's four double dip scenarios to get one through six all together, and it's super overpriced once again. Oh my gosh, it's just like the year of half sets, re-releases, Think about what else do we have coming up from studios? Ooh, you get a Saw X still book now. Why didn't that come out with the Saw X slipcover? They just want to make you double dip and pay more. Any other announcements you all super excited for? Well, let's look at the boutique labels. Do we have any super hot titles from them? Yeah, we got Risky Business coming out from Criterion, but that's pretty much it to get excited for. And then you think, okay, Arrow, we got the Clash and Wrath of the Titan set coming out, which does look like a really cool box. It's kind of reminiscent of the Conan the Barbarian one. So I am interested in that one. But that's pretty much it. All the other release announcements are pretty weak in my opinion. Once again, this is just all my opinion. Some of these titles you might absolutely absolutely love out there. But then what else do we have to get excited about? Ooh, Jaws 3 and 4 still books. Super overpriced. You want to pay $40 for these? No, I do not. I heard they're the worst Jaws movies ever. So we're just getting these sequels and we're getting lesser movie title releases than we were in the years past. It's just the same things we've seen before, just overpriced and new packaging. I'm just not super excited for that type of title, and I wish we had something better to look forward to. And we haven't had many box sets once again. We haven't really had any studio uh, celebrating their 100 years properly this year, right? It's Columbia's. 100 years. I know they did volume four, but are we getting a lot of other still book announcements for them and really cool slip covers? Not as much as I would have appreciated. And I just want to see more. I want to see more from these studios. Are we excited about Lionsgate? Not really anymore because we know their still book prices are going to be outrageous. So what am I going to get excited for? The other Rambo movies if they announce them? The still books? No, the ones you already announced were super overpriced because we already got in 4Ks of the Rambo. It's just repackaging again. That's what a lot of these studios are doing. And it's really starting to get on my nerve, unfortunately. Like I said, the boutique labels do a great job with their stuff, but they just don't have as many hot titles to get access to whether it's for licensing reasons or how they ran out of all their titles that were bangers. I mean, like I said, we got Killer Clowns from Screen Factory, but is Screen Factory releasing any other super hot title this year? I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe they'll surprise us. So maybe there's a few hidden gems out there to come out. Maybe there's stuff you're excited about, and I do celebrate that. Trust me, I want to be excited for everything that comes out, but I want more. I want some more excitement from the releases that we are going to get. And I just, I don't see it there with what we're being provided. And right now it's just a downward year for physical media collecting for me. And hey, not a terrible situation. I get to recoup some money there and save a little bit. Yeah, the monthly hauls will be a little bit smaller, but once again, there's always pros and cons to everything. But I, I feel like we should get even more titles 
uh, this year. And I, I just don't have that hot title in my mind where I'm really, really excited about. I think I'm mostly excited about just discounts and sales time so I can get titles back at a reasonable price. So I'm hoping Prime Day from Amazon's better this year. I'm hoping to have a great time during the Criterion on Sale month. Maybe these other boutique labels have some really good sales as well. So I can pick up some of the past banger releases from the previous year they came out with. But in terms of new title announcements, I just don't feel it. I feel it's more like last year this year. But once again, that's just my personal opinion. You might love some titles coming out. And I want to hear about that in the comments below. What are you looking forward to in the rest of 2024? Do you feel it's a downward year? Do you think 2023 was better? Let's have those fun, friendly movie conversations down below. Of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and mega smash that like and subscribe. That way you stay entertained and up to date on all the latest physical media topics. And just have a great day talking and watching the movies. If you love this physical media topic, go ahead and mega smash the next video right now and thank you so much my mega membership supporters if you love talking and collecting movies consider joining the mega league of film fans through memberships to support content creation while gaining access to perks like shout outs exclusive videos and future topic choices